<clears throat> so the, um, the it looks like the camera's broke on my laptop, so um, there's no uh, picture of me that was uh, not that it's necessary, but um, that's usually what I do. Um, so, anyways, um, you're gonna have a disembodied voice here. So um, we've got uh, number 53. We're going to um, determine the number of solutions for each system of. Now, look, it says determine the number of solutions. So all they're looking for is intersections. Remember, solutions involve um, being able to see like where the intersections are. However, if there's um, here, like if when they ask for solutions, we've already set it equal to zero. So that means that where does it intersect the x-axis? Okay. But here we say, where do, the, any, where do these guys intersect each other? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and type this in because, um, because I can. This is totally fine for me to use the graphing calculator on something like this. Um, plus 9. I don't even have to factor it. That's not what it's asking. Um, and then that's going to be my blue line. And then it uh, looks like I'm going to have a y equals 3. So that's just going to be 3. So when I go to graph, um, what I would do is on your note card or your sheet of paper, just make sure that you do know that you should not have your plots on when you do this. Okay. And when I go to hit graph, I might be in the, in the wrong location. So I probably just want to hit zoom standard. Zoom standard sets it at a negative 10, positive 10, positive 10, negative 10 kind of uh, um, window. Now it looks like these guys have two solutions. I'm going to zoom in there and see um, where it hits right there. So I zoomed into that location. Yes, definitely two solutions. So my answer to number 53 is that there's two solutions. There's nothing else I got to say about it. Now 54 looks like things are a little different. It looks like I've got 3x squared. So 3x squared uh, plus 4x plus 5. And that's 1. Now this guy is not set up right. I have to move the negative 4 over to the other side where he'll become a positive 4. So that will be a 2x plus positive 4 because I've moved Okay, so here in this case, it looks like, oh, that's pretty close. Let's go ahead and zoom in here. I don't know. It doesn't look like it touches. Okay, it looks like it misses it. This guy's not going to touch touch each other. It's going to be zero. Okay. All right, 55. 55. Um, here we got different equations x squared plus 4x plus 3. And then I got to swing that to, so it's positive 2x plus 6. Okay, because right here, this guy's on the wrong side and put him over there. And I'm going to do a zoom standard, see what I get. Okay, it looks like two, two locations. I can definitely see that it hits it at negative three zero. That one is definitely for sure. Um, but this one, that one, I'm gonna go up to here. Looks like it's one eight. Now I'm basically just eyeballing that and that's totally fine for this test because we don't have to figure out exactly where it is. But if I did, I could go calculate the intersection and I could go this curve, that line, hit enter, and yep, it's 1 8, intersects at 1 8. So, second trace will give you to the, it'll allow you to go to the intersection. Okay, but you don't have to, like that was, I could see that it was pretty close to that. Okay, all right, last one for 56. 56 has these two guys, so it looks like I can just overwrite this as a 2x, and that as a 7. And then this can just be x plus 7, so we'll delete that too. Okay, this uh, addition is commutative, so I can switch the order there. And we'll do a graph, zoom standard. 
Okay, so this one's a little bit more trickier. Looks like it's going to hit it twice. Let me zoom in here. Okay, but this one looks like it could be possibly, yes, definitely twice. I see this guy. This guy is a zero. That guy is a zero seven. So zero seven is one of them, but this guy, I'm not sure. Okay, that looks like it's a, a 1, 6. All right, and that's it. Okay, uh, same thing with 57. Um, I don't know if I had you do that, but just decimals, whatever. It doesn't matter. Like, this is just a model that they used, and so I'm going to just stick to it. I'm going to clear that out and go negative 5x squared. I didn't even read it. I just know that an archer, an archer shoots an arrow to a height given by the equation, so it's a parabola. T is time in seconds. A target sits on a hill represented by the equation here, so that's how it's sitting on the hill. At what height will the, will the arrow strike the target, and how long will it take? Okay, it wants the X and the Y coordinate. So the Y is going to be how high, and the X is actually the T, which is time. So that's going to be the same process. It's just that you get to see kind of like why this can be useful. Okay, so we're just going to type it in exactly as we see it. And of course, I was zoomed out, so let's zoom this properly. Zoom standard. Okay. So it looks like uh, there it is right there. This doesn't make any sense because that would be below the ground. So it looks like it's that location right there. So what is that? Now I'm going to do a second calc with that. So second calc intersect. And I'm going to move over here. Okay, my first curve is going to be the quadratic. And then my second curve is the line. Okay. Right there, it looks like after 3.49 seconds, okay, it hits the target. That is 1.62 uh, feet. Let's see, meters. 1.62 meters off the ground, or just high. There we go. All right. That's it. This doesn't make any sense because that would be at time zero. Okay, and that means that the, yeah, that just doesn't, you know, you, that's before you launched it. Okay, so if you launched it, and it hits the target there. All right, that is it. That's all you need for these. Good luck.